On this channel, I've noticed that a lot of the newer viewers don't really know what I'm talking about when I use anatomical terms like the jaw ramus, the zygomatic bone, or the mandible body, and partially this is because I've taken for granted what I expect people to already know since we've covered this on the channel in the past for, say, the last three years. Now, in this new series, we're going to bring back an older series called Defining Beauty, but in a much more newbie-friendly format to teach you all, or you can revise what you already know and learn a thing or two, to see how certain anatomical features of your face affect your facial appeal greatly. Today's episode will be focusing on the gonial angle or the jaw angle and how it can completely change the look of your face. Hopefully, we can incorporate some of our Photoshop skills as we go to better explain how this feature works. If you like facial aesthetics and learning about what makes an attractive face, then hit that like button and subscribe to the channel right now before we begin. So, what is the gonial angle, firstly? To understand what this angle is and how it contributes to the look of the whole face, we have to super quickly go over three other terms. Just three, try to remember them and you will be good for the rest of the video. To better brush up on these terms, going back to Ramus 101, which is a video we made earlier, may be helpful. The ramus is the back part of the jaw that grows in a more downward direction, as seen here on Brian Whitaker with the red line. The mandible body is the blue line and the lower part of the jaw, the part that actually does most of the mastication or the chewing, and it typically grows more forward than down. It is the joining of these two lines which occurs at a point called the gonion, it's an anatomical name, and that's circled here, being the lowest part of the back jaw. And so the angle formed between these two lines is called the gonial angle, and it makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? That's all you really need to know to understand the gonial angle or the jaw angle and the gonial angle is a sexually dimorphic trait, with men typically having lower angles than women. Sexually dimorphic just means that men and women have differences because of their sex. Now, the main reason for this is because of the ramus length, which is also a sexually dimorphic trait. Balaji et al. discusses the gender influence in this paper, and when the ramus goes further down on the face, the angle formed between it and the mandible ends up being much more acute. As you can imagine, the gonial angle is much more acute. Women will commonly have higher angles and more rounded jaw shapes, but this doesn't mean that women cannot have a lower gonial angle, much like a man's, and we're going to look at a few examples of this in this video. A couple of good examples just off the top of my head might be Karina Kapoor or Angelina Jolie, who both have very acute gonial angles which results in a square jaw shape. We've already touched on the ramus and its importance to generating leverage and bite force in the jaw. In our previous video, but men will have a stronger bite force on average due to both a longer ramus and thus a lower gonial angle, or a jaw angle. The ramus acts as a lever arm with the temporomandibular joint at the mid-ear acting as the fulcrum. The most advantageous inclination is a ever so slightly forward one and physics does come into play with stuff like the masseter muscles acting as a moment arm. So all else equal lower gonial angles within reason, so like 110 to 125 degrees, produce more bite force and are arguably the most attractive for men, but Saeed Atal's findings in 2017 would confirm this with strong negative correlations being shown between mandibular bite force and the gonial angle meaning that the angles that generate the most bite force are also the most preferred ones for men. The lower the angle, the more bite force and vice versa. Now, that's not entirely true, but let's just simplify it that way. Even the jaw muscles gain size depending on the gonial angle. The lower the angle, the more work the masseter muscles do and grow. Again, if this sounds very confusing to you, you should go back to the Ramus 101 video and that will explain things with a bit more of a visual. To accurately measure this angle, usually the individual should be facing completely to the side because even a slight turn makes the angle appear higher than it actually is, so we need a full-on side view of your profile. How does the gonial angle or jaw angle affect your facial aesthetic? Still, in Brian's case, now if you remember Brian Whitaker, we can see how this jaw aesthetic changes as we mess around with some of his bones in his jaw. Reducing his ramus length and verticality or rounding out his jaw brings that angle upwards of 130 degrees, taking away from some of his masculinity. Timothy Chalamet is an example of a gonial angle that is not incredibly masculinized. His angle is of, say, 126 degrees, and it's in an aesthetic range, but he doesn't have a lot of the ramus length. It's not super masculine, and it's not super feminine. It's very much in the pretty boy range, which is exactly where Timothy Chalamet's aesthetic falls into. If we square off his jaw by increasing the ramus length, this gives him a lower gonio angle. 
since Timothy Chalamet opts for more of that pretty boy aesthetic by playing up his feminine features, especially with the long hair, this masculine drill sergeant looking gonio angle, jaw angle, whatever you want to call it, doesn't really go well with his facial aesthetic and this would likely make his jaw appear much too flat in the front of view. There is no doubt though that it heavily masculinizes the face. In this morph, we can see how reducing the angle by only about 5 degrees really masculinizes the face. Of course, there are other things that changed in this photo too, but the jaw just does look better. Model Malaika Firth also has a lower gonio angle. She has a little upward motion of the jaw towards the chin, which throws off the straightness of the mandible. This just shows how there are so many different variations of Ramus shape, inclination and length combined with mandible inclination and shape that can make the same gonial angle look so drastically different. Altering her jaw shape to have a more vertical ramus and straighter mandible gives her a masculinized gonial angle. Changing her ramus to incline heavily has the opposite effect. No two jaws are alike because there are so many different moving pieces. Further rounding out her jaw makes it kind of vague where her gonion is and where her ramus begins. We've established that a visible ramus is an attractive trait, so a super rounded jaw shape just blurs out the line between the ramus and the mandible. An example of a hypermasculinized morphology of the ramus and the gonial angle is model and previously convicted felon Jeremy Meeks. After we round out his jaw, we might as well be back in prison. Obviously, these edits will not look entirely realistic, and the forward growth of the cheekbones, brow bone, chin, and overall mid-face region are at least somewhat connected to the growth of the jaw and the gonial angle. Changing only the angle can look out of place because those other traits would not develop in isolation. Dentofacial growth, facial aesthetic comes as a package. Why would genetics and environment get everything else right, but arguably the most important part of the face, the angle itself, completely wrong? It can happen, but it is very rare. Now, Taylor Hill is probably the female equivalent with a long ramus and a low gonial angle. Hopefully, you can appreciate how slight changes to some of these three parameters, the ramus, the gonial angle, and the mandible, result in completely different facial archetypes. Going back to some of the old celebrities that we've analyzed here on Curves, Ryan has a Surprisingly good gonial angle. His ramus is near vertical, so despite a downward grown jaw, the angle between his ramus and the mandible remains quite harmonious. His jaw morphology, or the shape, is that low bite force we described earlier. Completely changing his jaw shape by nearly doubling his ramus length makes his jaw akin to, say, Chris Hemsworth. That lowering of the ramus meets with the mandible to completely remove the look of his downward grown jaw. Now, Ryan Gosling's jaw isn't actually the ideal shape if you would ask an orthodontist, but hopefully you can see how changing a couple of parameters makes his jaw look like somebody else's completely. The ramus length plays a huge role in the overall facial aesthetic of the jaw, and it's not an isolated cephalometric, so relating to the head and face, feature. Real jaws won't be quite as straight though. The ramus usually has some natural curvature to it. Zoe has that type of jaw shape and a low gonial angle of about 120 degrees. Some jaws will have no discernible gonial angle as we can't even see the separation between the mandible and the ramus. This can apply to those with thick beards or a lot of facial fat. From our aesthetic reports that we write for our customers, this is usually the most common reason why most people don't even know what type of bone structure and face they have underneath especially if you have a lot of submental and hyoid fat, which is the underjaw region. Your jaw can become so obscured and rounded, it basically gives the look of a super high gonio angle, which is a feminizing characteristic. When we actually calculate, say, Benedict's angle, it's quite good. And we'll come to see that the gonio angle is not everything when it comes to the attractiveness of the jaw. Like in Benedict's case, his jaw is poorly forward and downward grown. A term called the mandibular plane angle is used to show a downward grown or a flat jaw. And we might do a one-on-one -on -one video on that too. But Benedict's mandible downward inclines to 35 degrees, which is a clear sign of poor dentofacial development. It creates kind of a horse face look. And when I said Ryan Gosling's face isn't the ideal in terms of orthodontic growth, this is very close to what Benedict's face is. You generally don't want a face that grows downwards, so it's hyperdivergent, rather you want it to grow forwards and outwards. So a quick recap of all the terms. Benedict's jaw could be summed up as having a high set gonion, which is where the mandible and the ramus meet, with a vertical ramus and downward grown mandible. 
Asian supermodel, Sue He, is probably the lowest gonial angle so far. Simply changing the shape of her gonion takes away from the robust nature of her jaw. When her exceptional dental facial growth gets taken away, her overall facial attractiveness does take a hit by Western standards. Now by Western standards, we've spoken about this ad nauseum on the channel. In the West, we tend to prefer strong, sharp dental facial features on both men and women, angular faces, sharp faces, whatever you want to call it. In the East, they prefer softer features, especially on women. Theo James is an example of an extremely long ramus that inclines a bit to make a 125 degree gonial angle. Changing the jaw of Cindy Bruner completely alters her look to be softer, feminized and conformative to say the Eastern beauty standards. Her powerful jaw and low gonial angle makes her a perfect fit for Western beauty high fashion modeling like Sui He. So I hear you saying, but Coves, I get the side profile, but how does changing this angle change your frontal profile? We can see the ramus extending from the ear to the lowest part of the back jaw or the posterior jaw, even in the frontal view. So the same concept still applies here. Theoretically, shaving off some of the gonion and rounding out the ramus would soften and feminize the jaw shape when viewed from the front. Sui He goes from Western beauty standard supermodel with a diamond square face to an Eastern beauty K-pop star with a more oval face shape. Jeremy also loses a lot of his facial strikingness and jaw contours. The overall dentofacial development looks more downward grown with less jaw prominence, depth and angularity. Without even changing his chin's forward projection, his jaw just looks much more recessed and melted. He is still attractive, make no mistake, but notably less so. If we take someone with a relatively higher gonial angle like Robert Downey Jr. and lower, his gonion, remember, that's the lowest part in the back part of the jaw, in effect lengthening the ramus and lowering the gonial angle. His face just becomes a lot more masculine. Further lowering Ryan's gonion gives him a Minecraft Steve look because it's just so crazy, and there is a happy balance that we need to achieve. Basically, gonial angles below 110 degrees equals a square face shape, and angles above 135 to 140, it's in the upper ranges of feminine extremes, becomes very oval and rounded. Even subtly editing Ian Sommerhalder's gonial angle from the front weakens his dentofacial structure. He is still attractive because it's nothing extreme, but it does show the significance of the jaw angle. Sometimes this can work to your advantage in women with a flatter jaw shape. In Eastern beauty culture or in extreme cases, gonial angle reduction surgery will be sought to replicate the look that we demonstrated earlier. Balaji et al notes the desire for correction in extremely square faces. Su et al shows the result of such an operation being almost exactly like we showed earlier. Generally though, the lower angles will be more attractive than higher ones because they produce sharper jaws as we've seen. This is again a western centric approach. A forward rather than downward grown jaw is also associated with proper dentofacial growth around the whole face, so a good gonial angle can be a clue into proper facial development, but not in all cases like we've seen with Ryan Gosling or Benedict Cumberbatch. So there you have it. Hopefully you've learned something about the gonial angle. This is a term that we use a lot in this channel. Basically, it's the crux of the jaw shape, the aesthetic. And while the ramus from our previous video was quite important, I think the gonial angle is a much more visual indicator of your facial aesthetic, especially in the lower third of the face. Now, if you would like to talk facial aesthetics with us, come join us on our Discord server. It's newly made and we're still giving out lots of exclusive roles that we're not gonna have later on but we would like to have you guys on the server because it's a great place for us to interact, the staff of Cooves, to interact with our audiences and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation much more personally than you would in the YouTube comment section, which can be a bit of a mess sometimes. If you'd like to get your face assessed, much like we did here, get Photoshop morphs made to show your doctor, or learn about whether you have a masculine or feminine ramus, your jaw angles and how they affect your face, get a in-depth look into your face, then you can order a Coos facial evaluation over at our website and it's performed by our in-house team of doctors and dentists to help you achieve that next big glow up. As always, follow us on Instagram for bite-sized content and if you're interested in some of the more modeling related things that we talk about, then follow us on TikTok where we have a lot more of a candid discussion on the modeling space.